Hello my friends, I have literally just got back from IHS, uh, over 500 miles of driving today, uh, it took us just over four hours to get there this morning and about five and a half to get back. I am tired, I look it, <laughs> I feel it, but we have animals to add to this enclosure. Am I wrong for doing this? Let's find out. All right, so first things first, here's one that I don't think people are gonna be very upset with, weirdly. The first ones that are going in this enclosure are two olive millipedes which I think are absolutely stunning little things. I mean, they are just incredible. I mean, look at this little thing. You see that? Two of these are going in this enclosure with my Royal Python, okay? So here we go. Here's the second one. And that one's decided to go and tickle Valdis. <laughs> so yes, there's the second one. And she's about to go in as well. So there we go. So that's the part that people I, I don't think will be getting upset with. Here's the next part. Now this is going to be challenging. I may have to pick the camera up this bit. In here are three Cameroonian dwarf geckos. Ligodactylus conroy, I think. Conroy? Something like that. Please correct me if I'm wrong, which I probably am but we've got tiny little dwarf geckos going in here. So why am I not that worried about them going in here? Valdis is a good four, four and a half feet long. Let me show you how small these geckos are. There's one, there's two, and the third one is in there somewhere. Now, I have to be so careful with this because they are that small. I should probably do this inside the enclosure. There we go. That, my friends, is how small these things are. So why am I not worried about them being in an enclosure with a four foot snake? Because quite simply, they are not worth her time. She is not going to waste her time striking and constricting something that is smaller than her poo. It's as simple as that. So I am very confident that these little guys are going to be okay. Very confident, in fact. You can't even see them. Now let me just show you once again the enclosure that they're going in. This bad boy here, okay? The plants are growing in beautifully. That might need another watering. It looks like it hasn't taken up much but that's fine I can do that I mean leaf litter for days moss hides height places to hide as you can see completely escape proof there's even some rubber seal in between the glass panels they're not getting out unless they get out of the glass when I'm opening it which wouldn't be great but it is what it is that's the enclosure that they're going to go into the chances are I'm very rarely going to see these geckos. I hope, I hope I see them, especially as they get a little bit bigger. Um, but I'm not worried at all. At all. It's just, it's not worth her time to try and attack these geckos. Now, do I suggest anyone trying to cohab any reptiles? No, absolutely not. It's not for beginners. It's not for anyone that just fancies having a laugh and giving it a go. I'm not saying I'm an expert by any stretch of the imagination, 
but I've done my research. I've spoken to those who know better than I do. I've looked into it and this is going to be absolutely fine. I mean, I might eat my words, but I highly, highly doubt it. So <laughs> anyway, let me try and get them in. There's one. There's two. And the third one is there. There's three. Teeny tiny. As you can see, this enclosure is now a cohab enclosure. Just as an added safety precaution, there's little sticks going into the water bowl just to make sure that if anyone falls in they can get out quite easily now they're gone i can't even see the millipedes anymore they are gone this enclosure is a good size as you can see the lights are starting to dim because of the luminize so it's starting to be a nice little sunset in here now yeah i'm happy i will catch up with you all in a few days and let you know if i've spotted anyone or how things are going whether i've had any escapees which hopefully not update on the enclosure obviously that does need another watering i did come in to find it had been pulled over by valdis earlier on which isn't reassuring but that's what happens when you put a plant in a royal pipe and enclosure i guess <laughs> I will keep you up to date, but I am genuinely pleased with that. Let's open conversation. Let me know if you think I've done the wrong thing, if I've been um, stupid or irresponsible, or if I'm doing anything dangerous, or whether you think that things like this can be doable, depending on the species, the keeper, anything. Let me know. We need to start talking more. We need to start coming together as hobbyists, enthusiasts, and trying things that we know are safe um or at least we are very very sure and just seeing how things go to lead the way as an example for the next generation of reptile keepers um oh, yeah find me nearly a week later since adding everyone to this enclosure and it's good now the first thing I will say I promise you I'm not just saying this but ever since she's been in an enclosure with luminize she is always out around about this time it's about it's just under an hour until the lights go out so they've already started dimming it's starting to be a bit darker in here and I found that every night around about this time, she's basking. I promise you, I'm not just saying that. Whilst, you know, I am an Arcadia partner now, I'm not just saying that. I swear to you, since she's been on Luminize, she's been out basking every evening around about the same time. And it's really cool to see. 
actually to be fair whilst we're here for those of you that follow me on instagram and saw me put a snake from the rack into her first ever enclosure she hasn't even got lumen eyes and as you can see she's under both the uv and the halogen she's out basking she is climbing she's climbing and basking as a royal python as she looks as though she's about to have a poo to be fair but she's out she's not scared as you can see she's chilling she's happy so please please ladies and gents when people say to you royals don't or ball pythons don't bask they don't climb <laughs> i've just shown you two snakes that are doing exactly those two things all right valdis isn't currently climbing but she's definitely basking and callie is currently doing both at the same time so just bear that in mind when people try telling you that all they need is a small space that's like a termite mound it's not true they need hides they need to feel secure they need clutter fine that's true but they need space they need uvb they need halogen or overhead heat i'm not going to sit here and just push halogens overhead heat halogens are the best way of heating them but overhead heat uvb leds preferably um and climbing opportunities. I promise, I promise you, they will use it. It's as simple as that. So anyway, once again, that's not what this video is about. Here we go. I've just sprayed the enclosure down and this little one has come out to have a drink as well. They are so unbelievably cute. Now, I actually think that they're all living on this plant. I mean, look, I've zoomed out and she's gone. <laughs> she's literally gone. All right. But look, you got the little poops. Little teeny tiny gecko poops on the plant. So I think that's where they're all living, is on that plant there. Okay. Now, I have found them elsewhere. But obviously, with them being so small, I do have to sit sometimes for a little while to find them. How is it working out? It's only been about a week or so, but how is it working out? I have had zero problems at all. I've seen all three of these little geckos. I've seen both of the millipedes. The royal, the most damage she's causing is to the plants, which obviously isn't ideal considering the, the little geckos live in one of them. Um, but it's working. Now, here's why i would recommend something like this now i know i've already said would i recommend it to anyone no i wouldn't but i wouldn't i, I stand by it but here's why i would recommend so something like this um a lot of the advice online says that cameroonian dwarf geckos the recommended size is a 12 by 12 by 12 or a 12 by 12 by 18 which all right they're tiny they're gonna fit it's fine it's cool yeah this is this is pretty much just under a 48 by 24 by 24 all right there or thereabouts it's quite a bit bigger than 12 by 12 by 12 or a 12 by 12 by 18. this is a mansion for these little guys and there's no such thing as too big it's as simple as that now there's such a thing as too big and not cluttered enough that's fine that's true but these little things are getting lost in here as are the millipedes, and they're not exactly tiny. So yes, that my friends is one of the few or many reasons why I'm happy doing this cohab enclosure. These three little dwarf geckos are getting lost in this massive enclosure. Now you could think, well, where do I get the enjoyment from that if I can't see my animals? Well, I can. I can see them when they're out and they're feeling brave enough and they're happy enough and they're content enough and confident enough. And that for me is better. I would rather see an animal that almost not wants to be seen, but is willing to be seen. I would rather that than have one that has no choice but to be seen. Choice. This is the way I try and do my keeping. I want to give my animals choice. Choices to bask, choices to climb, choices to hide, to have water, to not, to, you know what I mean? Like everything. You know, I, I offer my beardies, or you know, water. Um, which might not sound groundbreaking, but a lot of people don't because apparently they're just from the desert and don't need water. Just offer your animals water. 
fresh drinking water that's changed as often as you can. That's what it comes down to, I think. But this is a cool little ecosystem I've got going on in here. You've got the snake, you've got three dwarf geckos, two millipedes, springtails, isopods. You've now obviously got flightless fruit flies in there. Some of them are surviving a bit longer than others. Um, it's a proper little ecosystem and I'm so proud of it. I'm genuinely so proud of it. Now, if the cohab thing is very interesting to you and you want to know more, or want to see more, maybe something that's a little more risky than what I'm doing. And again, I'm not condoning it. I'm not saying everyone should go out and do it. But check out my boy, Mr. Will Exotic, because he's done something that's slightly riskier than me. But it seems to be working so far. Now, again, I'm not condoning it. I'm not saying let's do it. I'm not saying everyone go and give it a go. I'm just saying check out his video on his cohab enclosure. Tell him, tell him Riddler sent you if you do go and watch. Um... And yeah, let us know what you think, because this could be the next phase of keeping, as long as it's safe, as long as it's smart. I really don't see a problem with this. Now, I probably will get people screaming and shouting, why would you? It's OK until it's not OK. I'm very confident it's going to be OK. So, yeah. My little ecosystem. My beautiful little ecosystem that I've created. Let me know what you think, ladies and gents. Before we shut this down, the video I mean, not the enclosure, a massive thank you, a massive shout out to my patrons. Um, <laughs> listen, the, the money that people have been contributing on the Patreon, um, and actually, to be fair, those of you watching, those of you that have sent super chats, those of you that watch my videos, all of it, that, that's basically what has paid for this enclosure. Shout out to Brad's Bioactive Builds because him he actually sponsored the build itself. Everything that's gone in there has basically been paid for by you guys. A little bit myself, obviously. Uh, <laughs> oh, careful. Um, but my patrons, um, the people that watch, the people that subscribe, the people that like. In other words, please like, comment, share, subscribe, all of the good stuff, all of that. Um I just want to thank each and every one of you that helped contribute towards me and the things I do for these animals. It's it's very, very appreciated. It goes a very long way. I thank you. I hope I'm doing you all justice. Um, and yeah, apart from that, um, see you in the next one. Peace out.